Hey everybody, Captain Beanard back here with another Wi-Fi battle. Exciting day today because for the first time in quite a long time, I do have a new team for you guys, which we will get into in just a second here. But our first match with that team today is going to be against Ken May, random person offline. And uh, so yeah, here is the new team on the left hand side here, comprised of a pretty solid mixture of Pokemon that I've used before and ones that I haven't. So. Um, Pokemon that I've used before here would include the Raikou, the Swampert, which I haven't used in a very, very long time, actually since uh, ORAS, I believe. Um, and then we also have the Star Raptor and the um, Alcremay, another Pokemon I haven't used in a little while here. Um, and then, of course, we have some Pokemon I've never used before, those being the, um, of course, uh, Foretris and the the um, Petrarunt, the new Pokemon, the newest and final, uh, looks like will be final addition to the uh, Scarlet and Violet Pokédex. So, um, definitely ready to go here. Looking at my opponent's team, it looks to be a mono normal team, which is very interesting. Um, so yeah, um, that'll be a very interesting one. So I think we'll just go ahead and lead with the Star Raptor. I think that'll be our best. Uh, choice in this situation and uh, yeah we'll see how that works out so really excited uh, and ready to go here uh, new team new outfit new picture um, gonna be doing some things a little bit differently here so uh, yeah excited to uh, give it a go once again here in these uh, free games so uh, it looks like he is going to go ahead and lead with the Chinchino as we lead with the Star Raptor. So that's a pretty good match for us. We do get the Intimidate to cut that thing's attack, which is nice. And uh, we are also Scarf, which means that we should outspeed um, guaranteed. I kind of just want to go straight for the close combat because it is a mono normal team on his side, so it should hit everything. So um, yeah, let's just go ahead and do that as uh, we do outspeed, catch him off guard with the Scarf. Close combat incoming is just going to go ahead and one-shot that uh, Chinchino outright before it gets to do anything, which is incredible, and that is going to knock him down to five. So, um, very strong start to the match for us. Um, we'll see what he wants to do in response to that. What is it going to be? What does he want to come in here? to face the Star Raptor, which he will probably know is Scarf at this point, um, thanks to the fact that we outsped the Chinchino. So um, he's going to go for the Grand Bull. So that thing's coming in. It is going to get the Intimidate to lower our attack. Um, I don't really think we have any reason to stay in here, so um, we'll go ahead and switch. Although, um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, we'll definitely switch. So, And I just realized that... Um, it's not quite a mono normal team because Granville isn't uh, part normal, but that's okay. Um, so what do we want to do to Granville? Um, I think we'll just come in with the uh, Petra run. I think that's probably the, uh, the best case scenario, but this thing is going to go ahead and pop a Quick Claw, it looks like. So uh, it's going to be able to move first on us, but that's okay since we're switching anyway. I'm um, going to go ahead and come in with the Petrarun, which should be fit to handle this thing as he goes for a bulk up. So that's not great. That's going to go ahead and give him an attack and defense increase. So um, that's definitely not great. Um, in this situation, I think our best play is just to go straight for the Malignant Chain. Um, I don't think we can really afford to play around with this thing. So that's exactly what we're going to do. <coughs> he does go ahead and bust out the Terra, so that is the X Factor that I... Uh, almost forgot about here, so he's going to terastalize the Granbull into, unfortunately, a Steel-type. So that's bad news for us. Um, so it is Terra Steel Granbull, which means that even though we outspeed, the Malignant Chain is not going to hit it, unfortunately, and that is going to leave us open to for him to go for an Earthquake at plus one. Not quite enough to take us out, fortunately, but we do take serious damage off of that as we get some HP back with the Black Sludge. So um, I think... What we want to do here, unfortunately it doesn't look like Petrarun's going to do much this game, 
Um, but I think we just go for the Shadow Ball to chip this thing, so that's what we're going to do. We know we outspeed, so we will get the Shadow Ball, which will uh, do almost half to this thing. We are max special attack, um, but unfortunately he will take us out with the Psychic Fangs on the other side. Critical hit definitely didn't matter there, um, based on the damage from the first attack. But um, unfortunately we do lose Petrunt there and we go down to 5. But that's okay, we do still definitely have um, ways to deal with this. So... Um, I think what we'll do here is we'll actually go for the Raikou. I think that's what we'll do, because now that he has terastalized into a Steel type, um, he's back to being weak to fighting on all his Pokemon, which is pretty useful for us. So I think we just go straight for a Choice Specs Aura Sphere here. We know we should outspeed him, and um, we'll see what he wants to do. If he stays in, it should be enough to take him out, since it will hit him on the special side. And he does have that physical defense increase, so that won't help him survive this attack. He does stay in. We go for the Aura Sphere with the Choice Specs Max Special Attack. We'll definitely take the Grand Bull out there and knock him down to four Pokemon. So that is pretty solid for us. And so, yeah, definitely looking pretty decent here. We'll see what he wants to bring in in response. And it is going to be the Porygon Z. So that thing is in. Now, I'm not confident that um, even from full HP, the uh, Aura sphere, sphere will take this thing out. Um, I kind of don't want to risk it, whether or not it'll take him out. But, yeah. Yeah, I kind of don't want to risk it, so... What do we... I mean, we could switch. We could do serious damage to this thing, but... Um, he could have something up his sleeve. He could be Scarf, potentially. We don't know. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll actually just go ahead and... Hmm. Yeah, we'll actually just go ahead and switch into our Foretress. Uh, just to play it safe here. Um, <clears throat> see what he wants to do. Kind of scout this thing and see what it might have for us. So there's the Foretress. He does go for a Tri-Attack, so that does do almost half to us, which is quite a lot of damage on a resisted hit. We are max HP as well, um, but we do survive it, and then we get some HP back with the Leftovers, which is not bad. Um, now will kind of be a moment of truth, because if he switches out, he may very well be choice here. Um, we could take this opportunity to just go ahead and go for the Explosion. I kind of want to do that. Uh, this is actually kind of a little bit of a funny uh, set, too, here, so I kind of want to... <laughs> mm, I don't really... I could Terra normal, but I kind of don't want to waste my Terra like that, but uh, in this situation, we could go for Hazards as well. Those are nice. Um, hmm. So he does go for a stay and go for a Tri-Attack, and we Terra, we actually get taken out because we don't resist it anymore, but I kind of doubt he does that. You know what? Screw it. Let's do it. Let's let's have a little fun here, and uh, let's go for that Terra Normal Explosion as he does stay in. Okay, so what does he have to hit us with is the question. But we're going to go ahead and terastalize our Foretress into a Terra Normal type, changing our uh, weaknesses and resistances, obviously. Hopefully he doesn't go for the Normal Attack again, because I don't know if we can take it or not. As he does go Shadow Ball, so we actually get a free Terra. It doesn't hit us, and we're going to take that opportunity to go for a Terra boosted max attack explosion here on the Foretress. And we nail the Porygon Z with it, taking it out in one shot, which is pretty incredible, actually. Um, that is uh, all I wanted to do with Foretress was. Uh, do that. So we go down to the explosion, the Porygon Z goes down, so we have a double down here. We go down to four Pokemon, I believe my opponent goes down to three, and so that is an open battlefield at this point, and so I think we just come in with Star Raptor. There's no reason not to, as um, he is going to go ahead and come in with the Tauros. So the Tauros is in, we come in with the Star Raptor, and we go ahead and get the Intimidate to cut his attack as, uh, yeah. I think um, in this situation there's really no reason for us not to just go for close combat here. I don't know for sure if it'll take him out from full or not, but I don't want to switch anything into a Tauros attack really, so we'll just go close combat. As we know we outspeed thanks to the Scarf, close combat incoming is enough to go ahead and take that Tauros down, which is incredible. 
um, and knock him down to two Pokemon. We do can take the defense drops, but that is fine. So, um, yeah, that is definitely not bad for us, as we'll see what he wants to come in with now. It is going to be the Smeargle. So that thing is in. Now, unfortunately, this these things are pretty much always focused Sash, so we know that um, he's definitely going to survive whatever attack we go for, but we have to knock him down to the Sash, so I say we just stay in in close combat here. That's what we're going to do, as uh, he actually goes for a Silk Trap, interestingly enough. So that is going to go ahead and protect him from the close combat, and then I forget what the secondary effect of this move is. I think it cuts our speed, maybe? Yeah, it cuts our speed, okay. So, honestly, that's not going to matter, because I don't think, with Scarf, but minus one speed, I don't think this thing outspeeds us anyway. Um, so let's just go for the close combat again, see what he wants to do. So there we go, we hit him with the close combat this time. We actually knock him out. He actually is not focused, Sash on the Smeargle, which is very interesting, definitely very interesting, I'm not sure why he wouldn't be, but um, but we take the Smeargle out with the close combat and knock him down to just one Pokemon, which is pretty awesome for us. Now his last Pokemon is going to be the Sauce Buck, so he's going to come in with that, and so at minus one speed, um, I don't know if we actually outspeed him or not, because um, even with the scarf, the sauce buck is pretty fast. So I think at minus one, he, there's a ch there, he actually could outspeed us uh, if he's speed invested. So, hmm, how do we want to play this? I kind of want to switch out just to reset the to reset the um, the uh, speed drop on Star Raptor, so we know we can outspeed him. So, unfortunately. I think, I think we actually want to switch into Swampert here, basically, as fodder, so I think we're going to do that. Um, yeah, I think because we just need, want a clean switch to reset the uh, speed drop. Um, we don't want to sack anything else, so we'll switch into Swampert here as uh, he goes for a Thunder Wave, interestingly enough, so that's obviously not going to hit us, so that is uh, definitely an interesting play there. Um, but yeah, not going to work out for him. So. Um, we probably just get taken out with a grass attack here, but all the same, uh, unless... Oh yeah, we can't tear it, we already did. So, um, yeah, let's just Ice Punch, there's no reason not to. He does go for a Petal Blizzard, so he's a special attacking Sauce Buck. That is definitely a huge shock, and even actually despite our max HP investment and our Assault Vest, we still can't take it, actually, so, so that's unfortunate. So he takes us out with the Petal Blizzard, knocks us down to three, but that's kind of okay, I think. Um... Yeah, I guess we just go into Star Raptor. I think there's no reason not to. Um, but yeah, now we know he's not choice item, which is good. So we know as we come up to Star Raptor, get the Intimidate to cut his attack. We know for a fact we're going to outspeed him here. And we just go for the close combat straight up here as uh, there it is. And uh, it actually knocks him down to a Focus Sash. So he's actually Focus Sash on the Sauce Buck, interestingly enough. So um, we do take the defense drops on the close combat as he goes for a thunder wave he does connect unfortunately um, which is going to paralyze the star raptor so that is unfortunate um, but I think it's okay um, I don't think we outspeed him since we're paralyzed but I think we just close combat anyway here he actually goes for the pedal blizzard doesn't do much damage to us here as uh, we do go for the close combat breaking through the para and that will obviously be more than enough to go ahead and finish that sauce buck off and that is game. So we are going to win that one 3-0 against Ken May. But uh, that was a really interesting match, I thought. Um, pretty fast-paced game there. Um, pretty fun game. And uh, definitely an interesting one, I thought. Some very interesting stuff on my opponent's side. Some of it that worked, some of it that didn't. But um, definitely a fun game all around there. And actually, I think a pretty good one to uh, go ahead and uh, bring us back into a uh, more casually competitive scene here on uh, Scarlet and Violet. So um, there, yeah, there you have it. So, um, but yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching again, everybody. Hope you all enjoyed. Please hit that like button, leave a comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy. And stay tuned for more new battles in the future. So that's it, and we'll see you next time.